Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to create thumbnails in Adobe Photoshop. You don't need to use Photoshop. I have a bunch of alternatives linked in the description. It's just recommended because, you know, I'm doing a tutorial in Photoshop. But yeah, a lot of people liked my previous uh, thumbnail tutorials, so I thought I'd make another one. And just people like my thumbnails in general. I'm going to try to change it up a bit just because I know a lot of people require different types of thumbnails like comedy channels, beauty channels. They require different, like more intriguing, more colorful type of um, thumbnails while mine's very clean and basic so I'll try to change it up so you you know anyone can use it I also released a template of what I created in this video it'll be in the description if you guys want to download that and just edit that instead of following this tutorial because maybe it's easier that way for you before I get started this video is sponsored by bookmark.com it's a free website builder it has e-commerce integration meaning you can create your own online store and you can actually create your website in a couple minutes by only answering seven simple questions bookmark.com is able to do this because of their artificial intelligence and they'll actually create their website right in front of your eyes in under two minutes and in addition to this it's very responsive on mobile devices so if you guys want to check out bookmark.com it will be in the description but yeah if you guys enjoy this video and you want more videos like this hit the thumbs up button and let's get straight into it So right here we're in Photoshop and the first thing we're going to do is create a new project file and so you want to select pixels and you want to make the width and height 1920 by 1080 and make the background content transparent. Once you're done that you want to come up with three different things. You want to come up with the text, what image you want in the background whether this is a screenshot from the video or an object or a picture that you've taken and what the color scheme of the thumbnail is going to be. So personally this varies for me because sometimes I use my own images in my thumbnails, sometimes I take a screenshot from the video and sometimes I take photos from unsplash.com which I'll be showing you later. It really depends what fits the thumbnail better. If you're a comedy channel or a beauty channel or something like that you might want to have a person in the thumbnail which is perfectly fine but if you're doing tech reviews or something like that you might want an object in the background. So for me, I use something called unsplash.com, which is a bunch of very high definition photos that you can just search up and use. And they're all copyright free. So I'm going to search up something like gaming, for example. So when you're looking for a photo, you want to find an image that will allow you to place text over the image. That may mean that there's a lot of white space or black space. So in this case, you can probably place the text right here where uh, in between the monitor and this guy. And you also want to find a horizontal image, uh, preferably so that you don't have to, you know, resize a portrait photo like this into the dimensions of this, because if you were to resize it, the quality gets decreased. So that's not good. So it's better if you obviously have a horizontal photo. So something like this, there's a lot of um, area to add text. So I'm going to choose something like this because there's a lot of black space. So I'm just going to copy it. You can also just save it. Uh, if you do save it, you want to press file place and then select the image, but I'm going to just paste it. And I want to press control T, hold shift and drag to keep the aspect ratio. So it doesn't stretch. And I'm just going to place it like this. So right there, I have a very nice clean photo. And now I want to come up with the text. I think I'm just going to do like thumbnail tutorial. Uh, I'm going to make it white. So something I recommend you do is if you have a black background or a dark background, you want the text to be bright. And if you have a bright background, you want the text to be black or dark just so that the text isn't faded and it's very evident. Another recommendation I have is to stick to two different fonts. So one font can be very abstract and one can be very simple. So an example of this is I have Helvetia right here and it's a pretty simple font. It looks pretty clean, uh, but I can add something like true lies right here. And if you guys are looking for fonts to use, I actually have a bunch of videos where I recommend fonts. So that will be in the description as well. But basically I'm using true lies here, which is very abstract, very different. And I'm combining it with a very simple font. And I think that's really good. You want to give a lot of contrast within the colors, the fonts, the everything, right? The lighting. And now you want to highlight everything. So press control A and then press control T so that these options pop up. And you just want to lower this option so that um, the distance between the text lowers and i think personally i would make the thumbnail size smaller like the text smaller so that the tutorial stands out usually the cleaner font is the one that is smaller so something like that now i want to press ctrl t hold shift and drag to make it bigger 
and I want to center the text maybe. So I press control A, go to layer, go to align layers to selection and press vertical centers, you know, align it vertically. I think I'm going to move the background image down a bit. So the text is a little bit more visible. So there you have it. If you find trouble making the text stand out, what you can do actually is make a new layer, select on the brush, go to size and make it pretty big and make the hardness zero. So it's a soft brush. I'm going to set it around like 2000. Make sure it's black or white, depending if the background is black or white. If the background's dark, I'd make it dark as well. So something like this. You want to click a couple times until the background is kind of faded uh, with the layer you just added. So you can see what that does and you can erase it in areas you want it to appear. So like right there. So that's an easy way to do that. The next thing I always do is add a light leak or an overlay. Go on Google and search up like light leak. Go to images. You want to go to tools and go to size and select medium or large. So you know that the light leak is a high quality. So something like this. You don't want like a super complicated one. You just want a light leak on the side of an image. So you don't want something like this where it's in the middle. So I'm going to just paste this and I'm going to press on the blend mode right here and press screen. And so that's something very simple. So there you have it. I'm going to maybe lower this a bit because I don't want the blue tint to be there. And if you find that it's a little bit faded, if you lower the opacity, you can just press on brightness and contrast and then create a clipping mask and then increase the contrast so that's more visible. So there you have it. So press control T right click and press flip horizontally. I think that might look better. Uh, next thing I'll do is probably add like a dust overlay. So you can search up dust overlay or stars overlay or whatever uh, looks better in your opinion. So similar to the light leak, you want to make sure that it's high quality. So you can press large right here. I think I'm going to select this one because it has red in it and the light leak has red in it. So I'm going to just add it right here. So this is actually part of the clipping mask. I don't want to do that. So paste it here. Um, you can see that a majority of these like dust or whatever these things are are on the right side So I might want to flip it horizontally because there's already a lot on the right side of this uh, thumbnail So something like that and as you can see again, it's faded So what you can do is you know go to brightness and contrast or even curves. So lower it um, I would use brightness and contrast if you don't know how to use curves I think I would actually move this to the top now the light leak now you can see there's a lot of like empty space on the left or right so you can even center this uh text so go to layer align layers to selection and go to horizontal centers this time and maybe justify this to the middle so there you go something like that i think i'm gonna just move it back to normal though because i kind of liked it like this i think i'm just gonna adjust a couple things so in a situation where it's like this and it does it looks a little bit off it would probably be used for like if a person was on the left side right here or if this controller was a little bit more visible or something like that so i don't think this is the proper like image for this um layout so i'm gonna find a new one probably like this guy and i'm gonna just rotate him on the other side if you just move it down here right click and flip it And you can see now it looks a little bit better. Not really though. Maybe if we make it a bit bigger so that it fills in the gap you have right here. The biggest issue you might see is that the colors are a lot different now. What you can do is make it black and white and then that will change everything. And you can see now everything's kind of dull now. So um, you knew that before it was like orange and red. There's a lot of orange and red. So if you want to make the black and white a little bit better, you can increase those colors so that they stand out a little bit. So there you have it. I think in this case, you can actually center it now because the light leak and the person kind of balance it out. So if I just move it to the center, I think this is the center. You can move the light leak a little bit further in. Something like that. I don't think this is the proper light leak for this type of thing actually. Or maybe if I made it smaller, it might look a little bit better. I'm gonna find another light leak. So something like this might look good. So right click and copy. Let's just hide this light leak paste this this might add a lot of other colors so i'm not sure uh, let's rotate this and then screen so this might be cool if it was like all red so you want to go in hue and saturation and then go to colorize maybe make it all red something like that maybe it just adds a lot of flair so the next thing you want to do is maybe add a bit more color in it or you want to color grade it so you can use um, hue and saturation for this so you can just slide left and right to see what looks better usually i would pick you know a color that i like in the beginning but then it turns out not to be the color that 
ends up being used because there's other colors that look better like i think green and blue look really good but i think i'll stick to like red actually orange looks pretty good i'll, I'll use orange you can even use color balance to introduce more colors so usually changing the midtones would do this so if i move this you can see that moving it to the right side we'll add blue and i think blue and orange look pretty good together and you can just adjust a bunch of this so stuff like this so you can see the difference the color grading does so from this to this i think it adds more contrast in terms of color which is what i recommended you can even use um the photo filter and apply color and i'll just make it more of that color or you might even use gradient map if it fits like something like this would look good if it wasn't brown right uh, but personally i wouldn't use that maybe black and white look good this is probably going to end up being the actual thumbnail for this tutorial so that's pretty cool the next thing you might want to do is right click and press blending options and add maybe a gradient or like a pattern to the the text so usually i would use this one and just lower the opacity so something like that maybe add an inner glow and make it white you can pause the video to see my settings uh, I like to make it very subtle. You can even add like a little pattern. So you can see like that. Or another thing you can do is actually like create a clipping mask. Whatever texture you choose to use will become that text. So I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll show you. So if I search up like texture, um, pretend I copy this, right? So I have this. And if I just right click and press create clipping mask and maybe clear the layer style, what happens is the texture I just created a clipping mask for is the texture for the the font so you can see if i hide the paper layer now it's just you know so you can do this with whatever so if i take like this for example this might look cool might not um if we just paste this delete the previous layer and, and right click and press create clipping mask it'll appear in the text so for something like this it won't look that good because it's blue but you can maybe like lower the opacity and that looks pretty cool you can even erase it for parts of it i think i'll actually use curves to make it like darker and brighter so something like this might look good. And the last thing I would do is add like additional lighting if that's necessary. So I would use the soft brush once again. So meaning there's zero hardness and I would just apply um, white to the top and I would apply black to the sides. So something like this to add like a vignette and uh, erase. That's what that does. Sometimes it doesn't look as good. Sometimes it does. You can like overlay it, you know, mess around with the blend modes. I think I'll keep it normal and just lower it a bit. And another thing you can do is you can make the brush size smaller, make it white and just click on areas you want to emphasize and then go to the blend mode and press overlay and those areas will get brighter actually. Then you can make a final adjustment and just like increase colors you want or do whatever, like increase vibrance or change the color again. So if you see like a color combination, that's a little bit better. So I think like this looks a bit better. It's very subtle though. It's like more orange then you can do that and sometimes if you want to fill in more space you can add a rectangle and make the fill um like white and make the stroke nothing to make the stroke nothing you want to press on this right here where there's like a, a line going diagonal and you can just drag it at the bottom do that so it fills in more space so it's very subtle or something usually i would add a logo so i would go on like google and search up like photoshop png you can apply this however you like to your own videos maybe search up photoshop logo for so like this right here i'm going to save it because it's a png and then we're going to just drag it here and put it to the corner or something and yeah there you have it i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully it helped you out if it did hit that thumbs up button my name is steven and i'll see you in the next one